Well, welcome back to the Chatters Box. I am Kyle McClellan, your host for the Chatters Box podcast. And today uh, we are leading, the, the St. Louis Cardinals are leading in to the month of October. And so we wanted to prepare some guests that are going to talk about uh, what is October baseball like? And it is a different than regular season baseball. And so when I sat down and thought about who was somebody in Cardinals history that performed in a huge way during the postseason, and I thought of Anthony Reyes and his start in 2006 of game one of the World Series. And so I'm uh, very happy that we have Anthony Reyes joining us at, uh, on video for the first time on the Chatters Box. But Anthony, step, thanks for stepping into the Chatters Box and being a part of this. And uh, first off, tell everybody what, what you're up to and uh, what is Anthony Reyes doing uh, these days in, in 2022? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, great to be a part of this. Um, you know, nowadays I'm just an uh, engineer for the LA County Fire Department. So my days consist of, uh, you know, going to going to the firehouse and, and uh, you know, putting out fires, helping people, just whatever I can. Yeah, and so that was something you jumped into right after your your time playing uh, playing Major League Baseball, right? It is, yeah. Yeah, my father and uh, grandfather were both firefighters from LA City, so I always wanted to do it. So when I uh, was, when I had to retire, there's nothing else I thought of doing besides uh, being a firefighter. Well, that's awesome. Well, thank you for the work that you're doing there. And thank you for your work as a St. Louis Cardinal. Um, me and you crossed paths in the minor leagues. You know, Anthony Reyes was a name that everybody in the minor leagues at that time knew about one of our top prospects, um, got to watch you go through the system. And I want to focus on, you know, 2006 in that first game, but I kind of want to set the stage a little bit. Can you kind of go back over your year uh, leading up to that, you know, postseason? What was your year like in 2006 um, as a, as a young player, as a top prospect in the organization? Um, you know, what kind of year did you have kind of set the stage for uh, your performance that year leading into the postseason? Uh, yeah, 2006. So I remember spring training. Uh, I think they, they uh, signed Sidney Ponson. So I think that was, um, you know, I was trying to fight for a job there, wasn't able to make it in uh, spring training. So I know it was kind of up and down throughout the year. Um, at that point, my arm had kind of been changing, dealing with some nerve stuff. So it's kind of uh, trying to find uh, find my way with mechanics and, and throwing. But, you know, up and down all year, trying to make a statement every time I got up there. And you know, I think I had one, one good game against the White Sox that year. And then, you know, able to put on a, a little bit of a stretch. Um, throughout the rest of the year and um, you know luckily enough to get get put on the roster not right away but after uh, after that uh, I think division series against the Padres mm -hmm. uh, was able to get on the roster and and uh, not do well in the NLCS but uh, able to uh, to perform well for the World Series. So so you have limited experience you go into the postseason like you said you weren't on the NLDS roster you're on the NLCS roster pitch against the Mets and the big storyline that came out of that was he's tipping his pitches, right? So that was the one thing that, that they were talking about. Um, I, I want to talk a little bit about the preparation for postseason versus regular season, okay? So um, as this team's getting ready to go in October, is it different from a player standpoint? Is it different from a starting pitcher standpoint? Um, is the preparation, is the feel any different in October than it is, say, in May? Uh, the preparation is a little different. I remember having meetings before playoffs started and, you know, everyone kind of gets up and I remember the, some of the veteran players come up and they say how hard it is just to get to playoffs. Some of them got into playoffs and not made it. So it, there's a lot of emotion that goes into it for playoffs. Um, everyone's kind of different, but uh, for me as a new kid, just soaking it up and trying to find my part in uh, where they need me. So, you know, trying to do my part as best I can. I uh, remember the first series against the Padres, I wasn't on the roster. So preparation for me was, uh, it was tough because trying to find time to be able to to get a bullpen in, which I never was able to, basically just all flat ground. So, um, you know, all the preparation goes to the the guys who are, who are playing. So just trying to find, you know, where I can to, to get my prep in, um, and then, you know, getting thrown into the, the NLCS was um, was a little bit of a shock because uh, I think it was Marquis I got in for. So, um, you know, just doing the best that I can and, you know, having a week or two weeks of no pitching and then going out there to throw it, 
and uh, especially in the playoff season is uh, it's not easy. Yeah. So th- to me, the difference in playoff and regular season is every out is so magnified. So every mistake is magnified. Every, every bad pitch is magnified. Every run is magnified, you know? And so just that, I mean, from being in the dugout or being in the bullpen or being on the mound during that, I mean, it's just like, you're hanging on every pitch, you know, when in the regular season, it's a little more, laid back, lackadaisical, we got 162 games, but in the postseason, I mean, everything is so magnified. And and so that's where the storylines come out. So with the Mets, they talk about, well, he's tipping his pitches. So it, it sounded like you went out of the stretch. Is that correct? Or in, and stopped going out of the windup during that game? Yeah. So I, I can't remember if it was uh, Edmonds came over and said I was tipping all my pitches, but I had no idea what I was doing it. And, and um, you know, just not, not being able to do it for a couple of weeks. Yeah. And you go out there and do it, you just kind of get in a bad habit. So um, I just end up going out of stretch and hopefully that, you know, try to make that, uh, try that work the best I possibly can. But um, it, it is, there's a lot of emotion that goes into it because guys, you know, we all, we all want to win. We all hate losing. So um, especially in the playoffs, you know, it's, it's so hard to get there and you want to do really well and you try to, you know, you're trying to win and uh, you're not only winning for your teammates and uh, the organization, but you, you know, that all those players, you know, they don't have that much time left. Um, you really want to do for those guys, um, especially um, just, you know, it's, it, it's, it's emotional. Yeah. Yeah. So that series in New York gets extended, right? We all know that series very well um, and goes long. And so that stretches out the starting pitching. And so now did you have an idea when that ended? Did you think there was a chance you were going to be game one starter or did you kind of have like, Hey, I kind of filled in as we went here, they're going to bring somebody on short rest or, what was your kind of thought after that series ended? I honestly thought that maybe I was going to get in later in the game because I got put in the bullpen later in that last game and uh, I was warming up and I thought maybe if it gets extended, I might have to, uh, to get in. Um, but after the way that I, that I pitched, I didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know what my future would have been, you know, had, uh, you know, going into the next, the next series. So, I just tried to prepare and kind of fix what I, what I had done in game four and hopefully, you know, get a chance to go out there and, and, you know, kind of help the team out. So how did you find out that you're going to start game one of the 2006 world series on the road against Justin Verlander, who, you know, everybody knows and just, but he was a rookie as well, but busted on the scene, just obviously electric stuff. But when, when did you find out and how did you find out that that was going to happen? So we had, we went to Detroit and we had a uh, practice, I think the day before. So we went out there and before I actually went out, I was sitting in my locker and, and Duncan comes up and just, he's like, Hey, you're going to go tomorrow. So just do whatever you got to do today and be ready for tomorrow. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Didn't give me a whole lot of time to think about it. So I just, uh, you know, I just did my day, day before prep and I just made sure that every time that I walked, around or walking around like the logos that they have on the field that I just I always walked with my head down so I might walk around the uh the logo so I didn't see it but um for for me I I get kind of lucky because I don't I don't get too hyped up I just kind of even keel and um always kind of been like that so it wasn't that part wasn't too bad it just I didn't want to add anything to uh anything more than what I already had to go through yeah okay so he tells you that you have some pretty great veterans on your staff there that year and Supon and Carpenter and, you know, a whole bunch of guys that, that did they say anything to you? Did they offer advice? Did they kind of leave you alone? What was that interaction with the rest of your staff? Uh, so, yeah, so they, they, I just remember the whole, the whole year, you know, you, the starters are up in the, you know, we're in our little circle stretching before everybody and, um, you know, being the new guy, it's, you know, especially with Carpenter, those guys, like it's their conversations and you're not a part of it until they ask you a question. So, <laughs> Um, I just kind of did my thing and I don't know if they, they just kind of stayed away. I don't know if they wanted to, to kind of not put too much pressure on me, but they just kind of left me alone to do my thing. And, uh, I just remember the, when the game started, it was, you know, I was getting pats on the back, you know, everyone's super supportive. So, um, it, it you, you're trying real hard not to, uh, to let those guys down, not, not an organization, but you know, the guys sitting next to you, you just, you really don't want to let those guys down. And you're just doing everything you possibly can just to make sure that uh, the outcome's well. Yeah. So what's that night and that morning like before the game? Uh, the night before. So uh, I'm an Xbox player. I'm sure you guys know that. Uh, I was playing Xbox and, you know, just 
my normal kind of routine. Just try not try not to think about anything. And the morning, just you know, wake up, do my normal stuff, and head onto the bus. And that's that's it. Just I try not to look at the logos. My thing is like, well, I didn't want to look at logos because I don't want to see the type of game that it was. So yeah. I don't watch any any of the TV. So I just no Sports Center, nothing. Just did my normal stuff. Made sure I stay away from the logos and uh, just normal day day preparation stuff. And then, so you get to the, you get to the uh, bullpen, you can obviously feel the energy, right? I mean, there's nothing like an October baseball game uh, and, and it, it just intensifies with every division. So the NLDS is great. NLCS is better. World Series, there's nothing like it. That intensity, when you walk out there, you can just feel it. You can feel the electricity. So you're warming up there on the road. I mean, it doesn't get any, any tougher than that situation. Um, when did it set in? Did you ever let it set in or did you just try to gloss over it and just tell yourself it's another start, it's another start and go out and execute my pitches? Uh, you know, it didn't really, nothing really set in until I got done. Yeah. So I just remember, you know, going out there and the, the roar of the crowd's different. It's, you know, normal, normal games. It's, you know, you can, you can kind of hear it. And, but the, um, the roar of the crowd for the, for the world series it's it it sounds a little different so you, you try not to let it catch you off guard so you just i basically just focused on yachty the whole time so i just you know did my prep uh you know the videos the cds we get just to watch those um prep for the prep for the game and then i just focused on yachty and dunk so when dunk would say something i'd listen you know try to try to make some adjustments and then uh, if yachty ever said anything then you know just uh just try to pay attention to him and keep my focus on him really yeah. And, and one of the things that Marty Mason, who was a bullpen coach when, when I was there uh, and was there when you were as well, one of the things that he pulled me in my, my rookie year before my first meeting, uh, and, he, and he said, look, don't change what you do. You know, well, you're going to hear this meeting and you're going to hear this guy can't hit this or he'll chase this or he'll do this. But don't don't throw him your fourth best pitch because it's his weakness as well. If it's your strength and it's his strength, go after him and attack him. And when I look at, I watched that game back today that you pitched of game one. And when I look at the way you started that game in the first inning, you went with your strength. You went four seam fastballs up in the zone a lot, trying to get ahead and a lot of changeups. And the storyline became very quickly that they were sitting on your changeup. And if you go back to the first inning, there's there's two, maybe three at bats where they had good swings on good changeups. Um, and they were talking about how much you use that changeup in the NLCS against the Mets. And so it was clear that their game plan was be ready for the fastball and sit on that changeup because he's going to throw it. So going into that game, my question is, is that, was that your approach is I'm going to pitch my same game. You didn't make major adjustments. You know, you were kind of trying to stick to your strengths until they forced you out of it. It seemed like. Yeah. So I, I like to stay with, with my strengths and like the things that got me to that position. I like to stay with that. And I let, the other team tell me when it's time for me to make my adjustments. So um, you're obviously not trying to make, um, you don't want them to have good pitches to hit, but I try to stay with what, what got me there. And if I need to make adjustments during the game, that's when I make, that's when I make them. Um, you know, the uh, games like those, you don't want to be, you try not to do too much. So I don't want to change the, the type of pitcher that I was just for the game. I just continue to do what I do. And if I need to make adjustments during the game, I can make them. And, you know, luckily for that, it was, I didn't, you know, wasn't too much damage in that first, that first inning, but we we're able to see, uh, you know, what their game plan was and they basically didn't change their game plan. I just changed mine and they weren't, uh, they didn't really catch up to it. Yep. So how does that conversation happen? Is that Yachty? Is that dunk? Is that you? Like how, how did that, I mean, did you guys just not say anything and all of a sudden just started using different pitches or is this something you guys actually talked about in between innings? So after the first inning, I, I talked to Yachty and, um, you know, admins come down there. Everyone's just like, yeah, they're sitting on changes. I'm like, yeah, it's it's pretty obvious what they were doing. So um, we all just kind of like, hey, I'm not going to throw it unless um, unless they make me throw it. So that's basically just use it sparingly. And I uh, just, you know, relied on Yachty. We just stay with fastballs. And if, if they make an adjustment during the game, then I'll just make another adjustment. So, yeah. Um, it took a while for them to to kind of make their adjustments. And, and by then it was kind of too late. That's exactly right. So you used your curveball a little bit more in place of it. So you'd go fastball for a strike, then go straight to your curveball sometimes. Um, but specifically in the, in the fifth inning. Um, so that first inning, they put some balls in play. You retired 17 straight. 
if I if I remember right, it was the the longest streak since 1990 in a World Series game of 17 straight hitters that you retired with that new philosophy. And it started in the second inning. And it was obvious more fat. If, if anybody were to go back and watch that, really pay attention to the different style that you had in the first inning and beyond. And if, the, if you go to the fifth inning, Carlos Guillen is up with two strikes and you throw a fastball down and away and he swang at it after it was already in Yachty's glove. And if that to, to a major league pitcher doesn't tell you that they're sitting on something slow and off speed and, and just, he's just trying to wave and try to make contact at it. But that swing right there still in the fifth inning tells you they haven't made that adjustment yet. So you made the adjustment quickly right out of the gate and it took them till the fifth inning. They still hadn't made it. And then, like you said, then by that time it's too late, you know? And so um, one does pitching with a lead in that situation, does that help you settle in? Does that, I mean, how, how much different is that when Albert hits the, the home run with first base open, they, they actually do an interview with Jim Leland during the game and say, how in the world did you pitch to him? And he said, we weren't supposed to, it was supposed to be pitching around him, but he made a mistake on the first pitch and Albert was ready to hit it and hit it out to right center. But that changed the game that, you know, that gives you a three run lead. You can settle in and you're more confident, right? Just going with fastballs and, and saying, Hey, I am just going to throw fastballs. I got nobody on. If they hit a home run, no big deal. Right. Yeah. The, the confidence definitely builds as the, uh, as the innings go on, but um uh, my thing was always pitching. I always like to pitch thinking that I'm down runs. So I don't want to give up any more runs. So I just, I'm down runs and I don't want to get that feeling like I'm, I can give up some or get a little lackadaisical. So I just, uh, I just tried to pitch like I was down like a run or two and, and just to keep grinding and not really think about the score, just, just kind of pitch my game. And if they made adjustments, then I would change, change my, uh, make my adjustments and change the way I throw and, uh, you know, luckily they just, they did it too late. Yeah. And, and I could, as the game's going on and I'm watching, I'm kind of going along with Tony and Dunk and, and you, and just trying to think of like, what's everybody thinking in this situation. And when you get through four or five, you know, they're probably thinking, Hey, we got this rookie that doesn't have a lot of experience. If he can get us through five with a lead or four, you know, we can piece it. We had an outstanding bullpen that year. That was, you know, a huge part of your guys' success in, in 06, you know, we can go to the bullpen. Well, then all of a sudden, the fifth inning, it's clear they're not making the adjustment. You cruise through the sixth, you cruise through the seventh, you cruise through the eighth. And, and you know, those innings right there are so valuable to keep those guys in the bullpen fresh and rested for the next day. Then they can short game it a little bit if they want in game two, you know, because they're rested and ready to go. So those those innings right there are critical when one having a lead, they continue your, your offense continued to add to it. Um, but you just staying out there and just staying with that plan. And, and being able, I mean, there was, there was more pop-ups in that game uh, to the infield. And Ronnie Bellyhard had like, you know, three or four little jam or off the end of the bat, you know, catches that he made there just on the back of the infield. Um, I mean, it was just an impressive, I, I got, I, I got fired up going back and watching it um, just from being a pitcher standpoint. Like it was domination. I mean, it was absolutely on that stage. I must say everybody dreams about, right. Is to go out there in a world series game and, and just dominate. And it was, it was a lot of fun to watch. Um, I was hoping you go back out for the ninth and I'm like, man, how cool would it be if he finishes off, <laughs> you know, they finally caught up, you know, and they, and they hit one out there. Um, but you walking off the field, knowing what you just did for your team, what's, what is that feeling like? Uh, it's a good feeling. You know, I, I, I remember like we're talking about the crowd and, um, after that first inning, you know, the, when they scored the run, like it's the, the crowd is just so energized. And then I remember after that, the crowd being so silent. So it actually helped helping me that uh you know i'd have to listen to the crowds and i would just kind of kind of cruise through but uh when i got done um i just remember like towards the innings you know about middle innings fourth fifth you know no one drills really say anything and then towards towards later innings i started getting some pats on the back and then i remember like you know we got the guys being so supportive and they're trying not to to mess with the vibe that i got going so uh, when i got done it was just um I was just so happy that I could actually go out there and uh, especially doing what I did against the Mets, actually give, uh, give the team a chance to actually uh, come out of this. Cause I know the, there's some percentages going on with the, the team that wins the first game. So yeah, um, I know that that was, um, it was exciting to to do that for the, for the rest of the team, the guys. So you guys go on to win game one and obviously go on to, to win the world series uh, after game one, um, well, I, I want to go back. They show you at the when you come out 
and you're just sitting in the dugout next to Carp and um, Gary Bennett came over and sat next to you, you know, and you were just, just like you said, man, you were like totally just calm is like, you couldn't tell, you know I mean? You were just, you were focused, you were, and I think that, you know, that's such a, an advantage to be able to have in that situation to stay cool, to stay calm and not get too high. And, and uh, I mean, at, at no point watching you, did it look like the nerves were to you or you were pitching out of, um, you know, kind of out of your body or out of your pace or, you know, overdoing it at all and just sitting down, just kind of chilling like, yeah, I knew I could go out there and throw, you know, eight innings and, and give our team a chance. And Carp didn't say much to you. You know, you could just tell it was kind of like, hey, that's what I expected to do, what my teammates expected me to do. And, uh, you know, I'm going to watch us win this game one and and go from there. But what is what's your mindset after that? You don't know you're going to sweep, obviously, and, and win it. So, I mean, you're obviously as soon as that game's over, you want to enjoy it. But you got to prepare for a game five or six or, you know, potentially you put up a performance like that. You got to expect you're going to be back in there at some point. Yeah, I thought that maybe um, if they needed some long relief um, down in later um, later games that I'd probably be in for that. So just kind of, you know take my day off the next day and just prepare, uh, prepare like I can go in after three. So I just made sure just to, to stay ready. And if uh, my name gets called again, it gets called again. But, um, you know, the, everyone just did so well that um, it, it's you just, well, you, you get in, you don't want to let those guys down because they're working so hard, but um, you know, they, they did so well, just never had to, to go back out there and, and do anything. Yeah. Well, it was a, uh... Man, it was a fun series. It was fun to, as a minor league player at the time, it was fun to watch guys that that I knew from the minor leagues and and had watched and been around in spring training and minor league camp and heard about and seen go through the system. It was awesome, and and it and it, it honestly inspires those other guys in the system to say like, "Hey, man, I, I want that to be me next year. You know, I want to be in that position. I want to prepare myself." And it helps you believe too in the coaching staffs of the minor leagues and the development process there. That like, "Hey, man, they got they got Anthony ready." to go out and do that and really help the team. And maybe at some point, you know, I can do that. And, uh, and so it was, it was a lot of fun to watch and I can't help but notice the picture behind you, uh, that you have, but that, <laughs> that just from looking at it, I can see carp and soup and I see you starting it and there's Weaver. So explain that, that picture and what that means to you. Oh, so, um, I did that fantasy camp and, uh, one of the guys there gave, gave me that picture and it's, uh, me starting it. It's, uh, it was a carp. Carp. Jeff Weaver and then Wayne Wright and Yachty at the end. Yeah. So it's like the whole progression through the series, which is cool. That's awesome. I thought it was really cool. So it's, uh, I don't hang much stuff in my house about baseball. It's a, uh, I just kind of, you know, it's for, for me, it's just about my kids and you know, whatever they want to do. So if they want stuff up, my, my kids got some stuff up in his room, but I always thought that was really cool. So I'll, I'll, that's the, the one picture I got up in my room. That's awesome, man. Love it. Well, Anthony, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for, the memories and, and uh, I mean, that game is going to go down as, as one of the greatest, you know, performances uh, by anybody in, in a world series game. And uh, really thankful to have you here on the chatters box. Thanks for being a part of it. And uh, just love it. Anybody please go, go YouTube it and go watch that game. I watched it this morning and you know, the condensed version and fast forwarded just when you were out there pitching and you can watch it quickly, but man, it was uh, it gives you chills. And, and as somebody that's been in, a similar spot to you. Uh, never started a game of World Series, but but been out there uh, in the postseason World Series. Man, that's what it's about. That's what everybody wants to get to. To be like you said so many times, you don't want to let your you know you want to do it for yourself, but you also man for for your teammates, for your coaching staff that are believing you and trusting you and putting you in that spot, and uh, and you delivered in a huge way. So thank you so much for joining us and uh, and being a part of the Chatters Box podcast. Thank you so much. This was fun. Thank you.